Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java and Raspberry Pi programming tutorial series. In this video I'm going to be doing a servo test and installation. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my webcam here. Uh, basically I just have all this stuff set up there. And um, first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and open up my web browser to my website, pyjava.com, select Pi Programming, and scroll down here to the servo test and installation. So in this tutorial, I'm going to test and install the servo that I chose for Land Cruiser. And the servo that I chose is a Savix, and I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but this SB2271SG. And I'm not endorsing this servo, and I've never used this brand, but the specs on it are perfect for this project. <clears throat> so it's high voltage. Um, oh yeah, let me pull that up again here, this right here. So the, the servo is just right here and do a, do a focus, refocus on that there. All right, so that's basically it right there. Um, and now I'll go over some of the reasons on why I chose that. So it's high voltage, it's capable of operating at 4.8 to 7.4 volts. And I'll be running a 7.2 volt, 3000 milliamp battery pack, so I can power the servo directly from the battery pack without putting a voltage regulator into the circuit. And you can see the, uh, I just basically took a picture of the, the breadboard close up here. But this is the 7.2 volt high power nickel metal hydride 3000 milliamp battery. Pretty standard battery for RC cars there. Um, the servo also has a, a brushless motor which gives superior performance to brush motors and super fast turning speed. Um, I'm not sure what this, these numbers mean but it is really fast. A uh, high torque, it has 7.4, at 7.4 volts it has uh, 277 ounces an inch, which is great for turning wheels on high friction surfaces like car carpet, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and open up the Raspberry Pi here. And I'm just gonna use the Servo Easy program from uh, my previous tutorial there. So let's go with Servo Easy and I'll do a leaf pad. ServoEasy.java, okay? Uh, now I did modify this just slightly here. Um, I did, uh, did did some testing on this before there because the well I'll go ahead and start running it here. But uh, basically, my center of this once I put the uh, the little gear arm on there is actually at uh, 1.4 milliseconds or 140 as I call those thingamajigs. But anyway. Um, so basically the, the servo controlling arm here already has its little ball joint on it there and then the arm there, right? And so uh, basically that, yeah, we'll, we'll go into that a little bit later there. All right, let's go ahead and fire this thing up and, and get it running there. So I'll come over here, Java servo, servo easy. And let's go ahead and do uh, Java C, make sure I got all this stuff compiled here. <clears throat> and let's run. And bring back up the window here. Okay, and we'll press enter. Okay, so the first thing it's doing is it's going to um, basically it's like its center position and with the, the steering linkage hooked in, this will be where it's at there and I'll show you that later in the video. This is its maximum uh, turn in that direction and this is its maximum turn in that direction. Now the servo can actually go further but the wheels on the vehicle and now it's just going back and forth from maximum to minimum there, okay? Uh, the wheels on the on the vehicle can only turn so much to the left and so much to the right. And um, I'm in my office recording this because that's where my my Blue Yeti microphone is. So like it's not very portable to take it out into the kitchen. So I have to do a few pauses and stuff on that. Um, so I'm going to show you briefly the the layout, the breadboard picture of the breadboard layout. There, it's fairly simple there. But basically, we've got the Raspberry Pi being being uh, powered by the charging bank. Right, and I went over that in a previous video. I got the the um, let's make this larger. I got the battery here, the 7.2 volt battery here, with the positive and negative leads going into the breadboard. And uh, let's just go back to the website there and 
So we'll talk about the circuit starting from the battery there. And if you right click on this and select view image, it'll come up into a really large one where we can actually go in and, and view exactly what it is. So a uh, typical breadboard, you got your negative, you got your positive rail, and that runs, of course, current along the whole entire uh, distance of that. So the battery power is coming in, of course, attached on the negative rail, and, and, um, and the positive power is on the positive rail. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff there. Uh, so coming over to the Raspberry Pi, right? Um, we've got our one, two, third pin over, which is our ground pin, right? We have to hook the ground into that in order to make this, this circuit all, all happen there so we can control the servo there. Um, and then on pin one, which is, is the, where we're doing our communications, that's coming out here and going into um, this kind of lighter colored wire in the servo control here. And then the actual power for the servo control is coming right off of the breadboard. I've got the red wire going into the red wire here for the positive power and the black wire going into the kind of it's like the darker wire it's almost like a dark purplish brown wire there so but anyway so that's how this whole thing is wired up nothing really too uh too technical on it there so we are powering the servo now 100 percent from this battery um you know in the previous tutorials i showed you powering powering it from the little micro server off of the five volt high pin here but uh you don't want to do that. We don't want to do that out there in, in real life. We want to, we want this this uh, Raspberry Pi to be powered off this battery pack for as long as possible and not doing too much drain on it there. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and pop back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, come over and pause that from going back and forth. Whoops, wrong remote desktop. Let's. Back over the Raspberry Pi, control C, stop our servo. And I am going to pause the video here and I'm gonna go put the servo into the truck and then we'll come back to that. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the servo hooked up to the steering linkage arm now. And let's go ahead and make that just a little smaller here. Um, and we'll just... Uh, Put that right about there, and we'll come back over here and we'll run the uh, the program again there. Okay, so the first thing it did is it straightened out the wheels there. Now it's going to turn it from. Uh, I think it, I think I had said it like ten seconds. Yeah, so it turned it all the way to the right, and you can see how super fast that turns this stuff. It'll wait like five seconds, turn it to the, turn it again, and then we'll start another cycle where it just starts going back and forth turning it from side to side, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and pause this. All right, so the, and we'll just run this. So that'll that'll straighten that out. I'm gonna control C on that again there. So in the source code here, basically the first thing I'm doing is I'm turning it to the center, which happens to be 140. Now the center on the actual servo is actually 150, right? Which equates to 1.5 milliseconds for the pulse width. And, but um, when you actually place like this little gear assembly thing or the arm assembly thing on there, it doesn't come out just right. So just with a little tweaking there, straightening up the wheels there is just fine there, okay? And so on the next thing there, start it back up again there you know what? I should probably reduce this from 10 to 5 seconds there for the next run so I'm gonna pause this when it turns its wheels okay so at this point it turned its wheels to the right it's a little hard to see I'll maybe I'll reposition the camera here in a second there and uh, basically so the wheels themselves can actually totally turn so far to the right um, on the steering linkage here because um, then they physically just run into stuff there so uh, we don't want it to you know go too far there but then um, and then of course so that value is 115 which is only you know 35 of my little ratio here less and then for the upper end for turning turning left there um, I've got it set at the uh, put it back to center there 
I've got it set at 165. So that's the maximum width or the maximum angle that it can turn those those front wheels there. So there's the left and there's the right. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video again, throw on the uh, the body back on, and we'll go from there. Okay, back on that one there, just threw the body back on, and let's go ahead and come back here to the program, make sure I save that, and I did. And we'll go ahead and pop over here, just recompile this real quick, and let's run it. And bring that back up here. Okay, so it's going to straighten out the wheels for five seconds when we run this. Then it's going to turn wheels to the right, turn them back to the left, and then it'll start doing a rapid motion of left to right on that. Okay. <clears throat> so far, so good. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of a delay here on what on the camera because it's shooting like 60 frames per second, but uh, that is that is what it is doing. So anyway, so I got plenty of room inside of there for all these components that I'm gonna stuff in there. The Raspberry Pi itself eventually is gonna go on the roof of there. I got a little roof rack, mini roof rack coming along there, but um, as far as like all the other components are gonna be inside of the body, so that's why I've got plenty of room left on that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, control C, stop that. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.